Hello everyone, uh, Chris Green, the History Chap, and um, yeah, I've got to, I've got a dilemma. God, Thursday, Thursday dilemma. So this isn't a history talk, okay? This is going out only to people who have subscribed to my channel, so people who sort of like what I do, and um, I want to give obviously more back, and I've, I'm, I, I need your help, okay? So this is a moment for you if you're watching. Uh, to get your fingers ready and get something in the type, uh, start typing for me, okay, in the chat. Next, uh, the next talk I'm going to do is about the storming of the Taku Forts, 1860 in, um, oh, hang on, yeah, history chap turned on, only s s on subscribers only mode, yeah, fine, thank you. Um, right, next talk is the storming of the Taku Forts, 1860 during the Second Opium War which is, for those of you who don't know what it is, it basically China versus Britain and France in 1860. And uh, it, it, was, it was quite a, it was a really long war. And the, the story of the Taco Forts really, it, it, it sort of went in stages, okay? So there's, there's quite a, there's, there's an interesting story just about how the war broke out. The fact that, oh, there's this really intriguing moment, okay, where the Chinese tried to poison the whole of the British population in Hong Kong. That, that was one of their ploys, uh, which is just like, you know, forgotten completely in history, isn't it? What a great story. And they put arsenic in the bread, or a baker put arsenic in the bread and try to uh, try to, to get it to kill off the, the British population in Hong Kong. Uh, then then they, uh, they, they took the forts as a bit of a retaliation. These forts are up near Beijing on the coast. And uh, the Chinese were forced to sign a treaty, peace treaty, what, what Chinese would call un, un, an unequal treaty. OK, and um, and things in theory, well, the Chinese, the Chinese, there's no way that the Chinese are not going to adhere to an unequal treaty, are they? So immediately the British army had cleared off and the, the Navy had cleared off. Uh, they just basically stuck two fingers up and uh, decided to keep, keep, keep business as usual. Uh, so the British went back uh, with the French landed another force at the Taku Forts, second time round. Absolute disaster. The British lost, uh, let me get it right, one, two, two ships sunk, uh, one uh, run aground, one disabled. Uh, the Admiral in charge, the Admiral with his flag on his flagship, his flagship was sunk by the, by the, the Chinese in the Taku Forts. Uh, and then it was this brilliant moment where uh, there was an American vessel monitoring what was going on, watching what was going on, because they sort of, they were sort of, the Americans were quite sympathetic. They wanted to open up China as well. Okay, so they were sort of sympathetic to what the French and the British were doing. At the same time, they didn't want to make, they didn't want the British and French to suddenly uh, get some, win a treaty, which they weren't party to as well. So, you know, there's vested interest. There was a naval vessel, US naval vessel, under a man from Georgia called uh, Josiah Tatnell. Josiah Tatnell, maneuvered his ship, which was supposed to be a neutral ship, into the battle to rescue the British sailors, many of whom, including the Admiral, Admiral Hope, were floating around in the water. And uh, he used this great line uh, to defend himself. He had actually fought against the British in 1812, so no lover of the British per se, but he used this line that blood is thicker than water. Went in, got them out. First time the Americans and the British ever were side by side in a conflict, uh, although it was a rescue mission. Nevertheless, uh, then uh, you'd thought Admiral Hope had, had sort of learned his lesson, but no, he didn't. He, set, he sent his then troops ashore, nighttime attack, um, and that ended in disaster as well. So uh, actually humiliation. In fact, he lost nearly a third of his force, either killed or wounded, which resulted in the third uh, Taku Fort, uh, the, the third assault on the Taku Forts a little while later, which was successful. Uh, the British stormed them. They captured them, the British and French again, actually. And they then marched on, on Peking, Beijing, and uh, they, they sacked the Summer Palace, which is this massive um, palace complex outside of, of uh, Peking. And they did so, and they'd looted it already, principally the French, actually, just got put out there, not the Brits. Not because the Brits didn't want to do any looting. It's just that when they got there, the French had grabbed all the good stuff and there wasn't a lot left. Uh, so um, the, uh, the, the reason it was sacked was because the, the Chinese had said, OK, we're going to have peace negotiations. The British sent an envoy and a small uh, contingent of Sikh cavalry protecting him. They were actually surrounded by the Chinese, abducted by the Chinese, tortured by the Chinese, uh, and half the number were murdered by the Chinese. 
So not surprisingly, Lord Elgin, in charge of the British, was not a happy man and basically burnt down the Summer Palace. They then occupied Beijing, Peking, and uh, there was a, another treaty, the, the Convention of Peking, which was signed, uh, another unequal treaty, which, you know, again, um, it had lots of ramifications, okay? And the story, so we've got, you know, poisonings, the, why the war broke out in the first place, poisonings in Hong Kong, and the first, the first sort of unequal treaty that was being after the first Taku Forts, disaster at the second Taku Forts with the whole American intervention and everything else. Uh, then we had the third storming, seven Victoria Crosses awarded in the third storming, including to the very youngest participant or recipient ever, the 15 year old, 15 year olds, three months. Um, and, um, uh, and then they, the, the, the sacking of the Summer Palace. By the way, sacking of the Summer Palace, one of the royal engineers who was there sacking the Summer Palace, Captain Charles Gordon, Gordon of Khartoum. He was there. As indeed, if we're talking, if we're talking uh, the, the Sudan campaign later in Victorian times, uh, Garnet Wolsey was, at, was, in this, was in this campaign as well. In fact, he should have been accompanying that peace envoy who got abducted and 16 of the 36 people were killed. The, there was an officer, uh, a captain, actually was beheaded by the Chinese. He was only there because uh, the officer who should have been going was lagging behind, making some sketches. That officer, Garnet Wolsey. Garnet Wolsey could have been the man who got beheaded. And I wonder how British military history could have turned out then. So we've got Garnet Wolsey. We've got Charles Gordon. Um, we have uh, General Graham, uh, the victor at Tamai and El Teb. We have Jackie Fisher, later Admiral of the Fleet, John Fisher. He's there as well. And we have, um, we had, obviously, uh, we've got uh, General Sir Hope Grant. We've got Admiral Hope. We have Admiral Seymour. We have Edward Seymour, his nephew, who was involved in the, in the uh, boxer, uh, trying to rescue the legations in Peking in the Boxer Rebellion in 1900. So, Shepherd, seven Victoria Crosses to talk about. So, here is my dilemma, okay? I have done the script. Uh, for those of you who know, when I'm not doing lives like this, I actually do script, all right? And the script is now coming in at 49 minutes. I have never, ever done a video or a talk lasting 49 minutes, okay? I've done a few around the 35 minute mark. I think my very, very first Zulu War one was 40 minutes. So here's the thing. Okay, and I'd be really interested to know what you think. I, I'm throwing it out to you. All right, it's a straw poll. I know I have you know, a million viewers a month and all that malarkey, but you guys are subscribers, so I really would like to hear from you. Just try and give me a steer here because I'm racking my brains. Do I go for a 49-minute video and you just sit there, grab a cup of tea, grab a beer, whatever, and, and you just enjoy it, okay? Or do I try and split it into two videos, each about... 23, 24, 25 minutes long. What do you think? One long video, two shorter videos, as I say, around maybe the 25 minute mark. One video, Sarah Jane saying one video, thank you very much. And, ja and James has gone for two videos. Hooray, this is, this is democracy at its best. I now have one vote each. Where, where else are we going? Nigel's going two, John's going two, Ray's going two. Um, I can watch that long. I can't. I can't. Many times for other pressure. We'd love to hear some British history route Tunisia. Philip, don't do not muddy the waters, mate. Do not muddy the waters. I'm trying to get myself out of China at the moment. Speaking of waters, muddying the waters. That's part of that second Taku Fort disaster, by the way. Um, I'm here for a long video. I enjoy listening to you while walking. Hey, thank you very much, PL. One video says Stephen. RV longer. Um, Gee, you love my videos. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, will it make a difference to content, says Joe? That's a really good question, Joe. No, it won't make a difference to the content. Obviously, I'll need to work out where the hell I split it so that it, it follows one from the other. Uh, the only time I've ever split a video, actually, was, uh, funny enough, we talked about Charles Gordon earlier, was my one I did about Gordon of Khartoum, where I sort of took him up to when he went to Khartoum and then the whole bit about so his life until Khartoum, when he was Chinese Gordon in China, fighting in the Taiping Rebellion. And then the whole bit about when he was fighting the Mahdi or holding out against the Mahdi in, in Sudan. Um, 
So that that uh, so whoever asked that, Joe Merce, uh, uh, Joe, yeah, that's the only that's the only difference. Okay, uh, I've got to find a good place to split it and then it reintroduce the second part as well. Okay, and obviously tell people that I'm referring to the first video. So you know if you can't remember who this person is, you need to watch the first video. You know, so swings and roundabouts. That's one. That's why I'm throwing it open to you guys. Okay, because I'm sitting here thinking, what on earth do I do? Uh, and that's one of the glories of when you just work for yourself, isn't it? You can't bounce ideas off a colleague sitting at the next desk or whatever. So let's just see what else. Lawrence, you're going for one. Brian, one or two. Oh, Brian, Brian Pine, you, you should be a politician, mate. You, 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 you've you answered everyone. Everyone's going to vote for you. They don't know why, don't know what for, but they love it. Uh, <laughs> Will the story naturally have two halves? William, if I'm really honest, it's, it's, it probably actually breaks into three, but I'm not doing three videos, okay? You've, you've almost got the, the build-up, the, the, the whole, you know, why did the war break out? Uh, there's some battles around Canton, that sort of stuff. Admiral Seymour goes up, bombards Canton. Uh, then the Chinese try and uh, uh, poison everyone in Hong Kong, or at least all the British people in Hong Kong. Uh, and then the British went up to the Taku forts, Storm them easy peasy. The, the Chinese basically abandoned them and they forced a, a peace treaty on the Chinese. That's almost like part one. Part two, Chinese decide to stick two fingers up at that treaty. Immediately the British and French troops have cleared off. So the British go back and there is this complete disaster as they now try and take Taku Forts part two, uh, where uh, they lose ships in the river and they, their men are stranded in the mudflats on the bank trying to attack the Taku Forts. That's effectively part two, a disaster. At the time in Victorian Britain, it was seen as the biggest disaster since uh, the defeat in Afghanistan in 1842 with the back, with the, the last stand at Gandamak. And then really part three, part three in many respects is, is, is a bit of a sort of like, a, oh, OK, which is the actual storming. If you can see, I don't know if you can see it. No, you probably can't. Sorry, um, I can see on my screen, but you can't see it. But there's uh, the Taku Forts where uh, the British are successful under Sir Robert Napier and uh, General uh, Hope Grant, and seven Victoria Crosses are awarded, okay? And then they basically reinforce the treaty that had been signed two years before with some add-ons. Add-ons included um, British got Kowloon, as well as Hong Kong Island, only a little bit of Kowloon, strangely enough, up to a road which is called Boundary Road, if you know Hong Kong, up to Boundary Road, that was British and it was gonna be British in perpetuity. And the rest of Hong Kong in, went sort of up Kowloon Peninsula and into what's now the New Territories was leased on a 99 year lease from from China. And that lease ran out in 1997. And that's when the British gave Hong Kong in its entirety back to China. But actually, that tiny little bit of Kowloon and Hong Kong Island were not covered by the lease. So the British could, could have dug their heels in and said, well, we're not giving that back because we're not obliged to. You gave it to us in perpetuity back in Victorian times. Um, British government looked at it and said, actually, it's we're not going to, you know, we can't sustain a, a, a tiny little overseas territory like that. So um, so it could be three part, but I wouldn't make it a three part because three parts, I think it starts to lose people along the way. People are either in for the long haul. They could probably be in for, you know, two twenty five minutes. So let me just see. Loads of you are putting comments. So let me just say I'm asking you the question. I've been rattling away. No preference. Keep it fresh. Your energy goes up. Go for two. OK. Sarah Jane, two forty four forty nine minute videos. I'll, I will I will I will raise my game. Oh, hang on, James. Mark Felton does a, a multi episode on a subject. Then later he combines them into one video at some point. Interesting. Didn't know that. Thank you for that one. I follow Mark, but I have to be honest, I'm doing so much work myself. That I don't have time to watch a lot of Mark's videos. Average film lasts an hour and a half. How can people not have the attention span to watch 49 minutes? Stephen, uh, <laughs> there's enough of them who don't. <laughs> um, opium, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, we all know it's about the opium wars. Um, I've seen some do short videos, then combine them into a long video with a complete story like that idea, which I think is what we're talking about with Mark Felton there. Thank you. And someone else has said to combine two, or make two and then combine them later on. Two videos will break the flow of the story unless there's an actual break. Yeah, okay. Would two videos give you greater increased stats? Good question, Nigel. Don't know. Never done it. So it's a bit of an unknown, isn't it? Another unknown quantity. Um, I guess 
I guess if you had two videos, your actual number of views goes up because you get twice as many, don't you? My watch time would be lower. And watch time is actually very important in YouTube. Um, a lot of people don't talk about that. Most people, will, the ego is all around how many views you get. But anyway, um, one video, please, from Robin. Paul says, I don't like the shorts. Don't you see the point of them? If I'm honest, Paul, neither do I. I do do some dabbling. <laughs> but I am not sure. Uh, they, they don't work for me. I'm not quite sure what they're... I mean, you can't earn lots of money out of shorts unless unless you're churning out absolutely shed loads a day and you get lots of in sponsorship. Uh, I don't churn out lots a day and I don't get sponsorship. The only thing I can possibly use shorts for is to say to people, it's coming up or did you see it? Go over and watch the main video. Three hours videos, please. Thank you. Make them all. Yay! Um, Ningbo, I worked there and I believe we've had some influence there. Yes, we have. It was in the first Opium War, principally. Um, uh, General General Hope, uh, sorry, Admiral Hope did recover at uh, there as well after his disaster at the second Taku Forts in this war. Um, either, oh, sorry, we've read that one already. Yes, two would be good. Sarah Jane, with your enthusiasm for history, 49 minutes will fly by. Uh, it might do for you. Trust me, Sarah Jane, <laughs> editing a 49-minute video, minute video. I'll, I'll, I'll need a stiff drink. Could be coffee, could be alcohol. Who knows? Um, how many nations were involved in the Opium Wars? Were the Japanese involved? Don't really want to get down that. I don't want to answer too many questions at this stage, but just for the record, uh, only the British and the, and the French were involved in the Opium Wars, per se. Lots of other countries were applying pressure and coming off the back of it. The, I mean, the Americans, um, I've read effectively over the, the 19th century, beginning of the 20th century, managed to have 20 what the Chinese would consider unequal treaties with China. Uh, the Russians, of course, were on the back of some of this stuff. They weren't actually involved in the opium wars, but they were, uh, they were taking advantage of the fact that the Chinese were weakened and they took off a large part of Manchuria and what's now Vladivostok was originally Chinese and they took that area and it's now still part of the the of Russia isn't it so um so they were coming out nicely of it obviously the China the, again the Japanese later on weren't involved in the opium wars but they flexed their muscles in the sino Chinese uh, sino uh, Japanese war of 1895 they seized Taiwan um and they seized uh, they seized some parts of the mainland the Germans were in on the act they were at Qingsao, uh which is up near the Taku forts actually and that's so those of you who go to Chinese restaurants and they have Qing Sao beer, lager beer. Qing Sao beer is from the German enclave. It's lager. So it's a, it's the German enclave. It's like Germany's gift, imperial gift to China and the world. Qing Sao beer. Um, I'd go for two 30 minute videos. Good morning from Chicago. Good morning to you. It's good afternoon here. And I'm now running late and I haven't produced a video for you guys for this evening. Um, yeah. Um, Uh, there's a question about British Raj. Can, can I come back to that one at some stage? I, I'm, I, I'm needing your help here, folks. On really trying to work out: is it one forty-nine minute or two sort of twenty-fives? It might be something like twenty-seven and twenty-two because the natural flow. I think actually where we got to. If we go up to the disaster, the second second Taku Fultz disaster, that is with Josiah Tatnall, Tat, Tatnall, Tattles, Tatnall. Sorry. Um, rescuing the British. Um, that's about 27 minutes. The storming, the third storming, the successful storming, seven Victoria crosses, burning down the Summer Palace, it's about 22. Okay, I don't think that helps anyone. So we've got 27, 22. Um, yeah, um, there you go. And of course, now I've mentioned the beer and Tsing Sao beer. Jim, you're straight in, you like it. Um, yeah, I, I like it. Be honest, I like it. I like it in Chinese restaurants. Not one that I would necessarily get out the beer rack and think, "Oh, I'm I'm I'm, I'm a bit thirsty here uh, on a summer's night in England. Let me have a Xing Sao beer." But there you go. Um, you didn't know about the Xing Sao beer, Lawrence. I know. I'm, do you know? Can you imagine being stuck in a broken down lift with me? Okay, the first twenty minutes or so would be like really interesting. After that, you you you'd hope that the I don't know you'd hope. 
you'd, you'd hope we suffocate or something, or at least I suffocate and shut up, wouldn't you? But uh, uh, there we go. Hadn't expected that. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, someone just pointed here, people's attention span is getting less and less. I agree with that. And um, the only maybe saving grace I have, and it's not much of one, is my viewer base tend to be older, okay? I don't know what age everyone is here. I'm looking at one or two of the photos. I think we might be in this ballpark, but the bulk of my viewing base are over 55. They do tend to stick around for longer, but not all. That's massive sweeping statements. And that's rather like saying most you know, 18 year olds don't have any attention. There's, there's a general feeling they don't, but um, again, sweeping statements. Yeah. I vote for two. Love the tip bit about the beer. I tell you, I've got loads of tidbits about some of the characters in this story. This story is absolutely littered. I mean, I've talked about Charles Gordon and General Wolseley and John Fisher and, of course, Josiah Tapnell. Jo Josiah Tapnell, by the way, ends up serving in the in the Confederate Navy in the uh, in the American Civil War. Uh, a couple of destroyers named after him subsequently. He was he was sort of you know um, rehabilitated after the, the American Civil War. Um, there was a there was a, uh, an American frigate destroyer which was finally decommissioned in the 1990s, which was um, uh, the Josiah Tattnall. Uh, but but there's loads of others. I mean, there's uh, the, you know, the, uh, Lord Elgin who was the British diplomat there at the time. Lord Elgin, it's his dad who, who brought the Elgin marbles to Britain from Greece, you know, massive controversy. Contro controversy. Um, Lord Elgin went on to become Viceroy of India. He'd already been Governor General of Canada. We had um, Harry Parks, this talented young uh, British consul down in Canton where it all kicked off with a boat being seized by the Chinese authorities called the Arrow and Harry Parks. Harry Parks, an amazing character from Blockswich in Staffordshire, very much in the black country now. Um, he was orphaned at five, lived with an uncle who then basically sent him off to live with his daughter, so Harry's cousin. She was married to a missionary in China. He ended up in China aged 13, orphaned at five, in China at 13, fluent in Chinese by 21 and in the British diplomatic service. Went on to, after all this stuff, he ends up being a British envoy in uh, Japan, where he survived three different assassination attempts from different samurai, uh, the samurai warriors and warlords. Uh, fascinating bloke. Ends up as uh, ambassador in, in Peking in the 1880s and, and died there. Um, we had Sir Henry, uh, sorry, Sir John Bowring, who was the governor of Hong Kong, former radical member of parliament. And this is how politics and some people change, don't they? So there we have um, Sir John Bowring, warmonger, wanting the second opium war against the Chinese. Earlier in his career, radical pro-Chartist member of parliament, uh, pro-Irish emancipation, um, pro uh, very much in, in favour of the, the, the handloom weavers, champion the handloom weavers, and um, a failed businessman, uh, another fascinating man who ends up establishing the botanical gardens in Hong Kong as well, one of his parting shots to Hong Kong. Um, there we go. I've, I've obviously opened up a whole can of worms now about what ages of people got concentration camps or not. Thank you. We have a 22-year-old, very blessed. I have some 22-year-olds or some youngsters here. Us old grey-haired people are starting, you know, we, we rule the roost as far as my membership stats are concerned. But there is a, a loyal group of people who are young, uh, a few in London, I know, uh, a couple in Canada, uh, one in Australia, definitely. He actually bought, can you believe this? He bought, as a Father's Day present, he bought an hour of my time <laughs> to entertain his dad. They both watch my channel. And uh, so they, he uh, contacted me and said, you know, can I actually buy an hour of your time? We just do a live talk like this. We actually did it on Zoom so that we could actually talk between us. But anyway, uh, that was quite cool. I'd love to do that a bit more often. Not, not too often, but more often um splitting it up okay someone 63 someone 61 we're all around there i'm just a bit lower but i'm not gonna say what well maybe i will but hey um uh, do it as a long one chris i could never get bored listening to you they were very kind uh nice to see you lads in <laughs> <laughs> young lads interested. I think lots of young lads are interested in, in history, uh, Francisco, but um, it's just got to be told the right way, hasn't it? Um, and I try, 
um, I mean, one of the things I want to do is just share stories from history and not take sides. Obviously, I'm British and I do G it up, although if you've noticed my Roman videos, Roman invasion of Britain, I sound quite enthusiastic about the Romans invading Britain as well. So I, I just I try and put a bit of energy and, and a bit of life into videos and don't as much as I think I don't want to come across like on some bloody AI ro robot reading out some history text. Um, I have no intention of using AI to write my scripts for me or to deliver my scripts for me. But I know I know very well there are people out there doing it. Um, and I just want I, as much as anything, I want people to understand, actually, Francisco, why we're here. Yeah, why do why do Irish people have a beef with the British? Okay, why do we why do Iranians have a beef with the British and the and the Americans? Um, I'm not saying right or wrong, and, and I'm a great believer, by the way. So, but why do they have why do they have those things? We've got to understand where we where we've come from to understand why we are where we are now. Um, same slavery and things like that. Uh, you know, we've got to know the stories of history. It's not just about not repeating history. Because I think, unfortunately, as humans, we're a bit stupid and we probably do repeat history a bit too often, actually. But um, it's understanding what the story of why we're here. That's my view. And also that there is this golden thread that connects us to the past and indeed to each other. Um, and the final thing I'd say, if I was teaching history, and I'm not a history teacher, I've got a history degree, but I'm not a history teacher, been in business all my life, is um, that it uh, uh, depends. It's all about history is all about perspectives isn't it you know where you how you view the world and very often that's driven by parents and religious leaders and school teachers and politicians and the press and everything around you how you view the world okay is just how you view the world so one person's hero is someone else's villain one person's freedom fighter fighter is someone else's terrorist and we like to believe that our view of the world is absolutely correct don't we you know that like you know the taliban are bad but I guess if I was an Afghan, wouldn't I believe the Taliban are bad? I don't know. You know, I'd like to think I was an enlightened Afghan, obviously. But why would I be? You know, I live in I live in rural Worcestershire here in England. If I lived in rural Afghanistan, I guess I'd be reasonably conservative in my views. Um, and I'd probably think the Taliban are great and they drove out yet another foreign invader. Yeah, it's all about perspectives, isn't it? There you go. That's my. Uh, anyway, we're way off the subject because I was. This is only supposed to be a quickie today, and just finding out how we're all how whether it's a, a two two videos about the second opium war and the storming of the Tuckoo Forts or one video. And I'm thinking we're getting um, we're, we're getting a we've got a bit of a divided attention. Uh, sorry, divided attention, divided opinions here, and so. Um, but I'm, I'm very grateful for all your thoughts. And I love you all joining in like this. I mean, this is completely off the cuff. And um, and here you all are. So um, this is really... Um, and G, welcome to Waterloo member. Thank you very much. One of the things I might do is... Uh, one of the things I am thinking of doing, by the way, folks, is doing a few more of these live talks, but actually not, not rambling like this, all right? But actually a, a thing. So let's talk about... Let's talk about... Um, like Sir, Sir John Bowring, the, the, the governor of Hong Kong, and his whole political story, you know, his, his political story from radical, radical to, to governor of, of, of Hong Kong, um, who incidentally, by the way, ends up, um, he died a reasonably early death because of complications from that arsenic in the bread that the Chinese baker put in the bread in Hong Kong at the beginning of the Second Opium War. Um, so, uh, uh, but I'm thinking about maybe doing some more like live talks like this. Uh, covering a particular topic uh, within my membership club, my membership channel here on YouTube. So not so many bright, snappy pictures. A lot more me talking. A lot more of you asking questions and 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 you know shooting the breeze. Uh, because I always started this history chat thing, uh, and some of you will know this story. But uh, I started during COVID lockdown. And one of my friends said, "Why don't you just tell us some stories from history?" Because quite frankly, you bore the arse off us when, when, when we're down the pub. And, they, and actually, they're laughing. They said that. They said, you know, because it's absolutely fascinating. And they actually challenged me once. They said, tell us the story of 1066. And at the end of it, they were like, oh, my God, this is absolutely fantastic. I never knew it. And that's where I got my title. And it's a talk I give nowadays. And I call it 1066, England's Real Game of Thrones, because there were so many machinations going on in England at the time. Politics. It's always been there, always will be there. 
people out for themselves, pretending they're up for someone else or supporting someone else. Um, fascinating stuff. Oh, just, just as an aside, 1066, William the Conqueror won the Battle of Hastings. Okay. Prior to him being offered the throne or the crown of England, did you know that he actually, a large part of his army, including William, went down with dysentery? Dysentery is a killer. It was a killer in the Middle Ages. William the Conqueror managed to survive. He was a, he was a, he was a fighter. William of Normandy was a fighter. Uh, but imagine that as a historical, like, sliding doors moment. He wins the Battle of Hastings and then dies of dysentery. What on earth would have happened to England and English history and, and European history if that had not happened in world history? Because um, I'm a great believer, actually, the Normans and Norman blood in England is part of a driver towards uh, the, the British Empire. I, I think the, the Normans were um, brought in a real warlike part to, to the Anglo-Saxons or to the English. But anyway, another one of my things. Um, thank you very much, Jim. Everyone can uh, please hit the like button. That's a good one. Uh, I'll, I'll maybe for subscribers and members, I'll talk you through the little bits I know of YouTube and how YouTube sort of reward you. Oh, by the way, sorry, someone has very generously, um, I'm not sure if that's Dalton, but someone has very generously uh, hit the, um, uh, the the button, the donate button at the bottom and it's just donated $20. That is really, really kind of you. I I'm not sure if it's you, Dalton, or not. Sorry, I can't see. G, it's you, mate. Sorry, G. It says G next to it. Thank you, Pam. G, you're very, very kind. Thank you ever so much. That's very kind of you. Very kind indeed. Thank you. I'll give you a shout out uh, publicly. Shout shout out to you now. Um, Dalton, you're very honest. You know, you can't be a politician. If you were a politician, Dalton, you'd have you'd have taken credit for something that was not yours in the first place, wouldn't you? Um, okay, a top G, yeah, absolutely. Um, and then someone saying hygiene was bad at the time. Hygiene was certainly bad in the Middle Ages. Uh, right, uh, and I've got off on a tangent, but that, that whole idea I said uh, where I was coming from was I'd love to do a bit more of that shooting the breeze and talking to people about history. That's the whole reason I set, started the History Chap journey. It's just gone on a, a fantastic journey since real uh, YouTube journey that I never thought would happen, podcast journey that I never thought would happen, uh, slower than YouTube, but um, it's growing and growing, which is amazing. 1,200 people on my mailing list that get my newsletter every week. It's, you know, it's pretty cool going out and doing talks. Got a few more talks lined up as well, which is cool going out and doing talks. Um, lovely to see an audience and just see the reactions. And as you can tell, I, I do throw in a few little asides and a few little funnies, or at least I think they're funny. And it's good to, to, to gauge whether the audience think they're funny or not at the same time. Look, um, uh, yeah, we're, I've, 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 I was going to say I've opened, I've opened something now. That's the wrong phrase to use with the dysentery and diarrhea. Um, but uh, I am going to sign off in a moment and give it just this little bit more thought. Do I go 49? Do I give it two videos? That's the answer. If any of you, this is your last moment to, to have an opinion and uh, tell me, having rambled around for a little bit, you might be thinking, my God, you know, he's, he goes on forever. And he's still, it's, uh, uh, we're, I mean, we've done 33. We've done 33 minutes of this ramble. And here I am wondering if 49 minutes or 29, two lots of 25 would be good. Um, it seems quite a lot of you are quite happy listening to to, to me twittering away here. So um, thank you very much. Um, that is So thank you ever so much, folks. Uh, just making sure. Um, make it make it binge worthy. Uh, I might very well. I might very well. Uh, two videos, please. Any length, although any length is fine. Love your content. Always looking forward to it. Spirit track must have been a wild time to be alive. Uh, the nineteenth century, I think. I think it was. Um, I mean, you know, there's lots. There's lots of bits of it that that weren't, and, and I don't say that as some uh, uh, pinko or whatever. I mean, it, I, I think you know, it rather depends which side you're on as to whether it was an amazing time to be alive and indeed where you were. My daughter always says, "Yeah, I'd love to have been alive in Downton Abbey time." And I said, "Yeah, but if you look at our family history, Zoe, that, that actually most." <laughs> We'd have been down in the scullery. We'd have been doing all the crap jobs. I would have been, like, I don't know, the coal, mer the coal merchant or something, bringing a bag of coal on my back. Uh, I wouldn't have been riding to hounds around down, uh, Downton Abbey. And, and ditto, you know, in, in like the British Raj and things, you know, a bit different being a, a viceroy to being a, a train driver or a, a, a private in the, in the British Army. 
Uh, okay, folks, look, thank you ever so much. I think um, I'm going to go away and start cracking on, get a, a certainly one video up. Might be two, might be two videos. Oh, sorry, one video, as in part one. Uh, there could be a part two. I like the idea of combining them like Mark Felton does. Didn't realize that's what he did. So um, I need to pay a bit more attention to Mark, don't I? Uh, amazing guy. Uh, very different different history to what I do, different way of delivering it. Um, um, but he's, he's slightly more academic, actually, Mark, and when he's got the credentials as well. Uh, whereas I, I don't do academia. I keep thinking about doing a master's degree. And then I think, oh, my God, I'd have to write a, I'd have to write a paper. Keepers, creepers. I, I much prefer doing this sort of thing and talking to people that enjoy history just because it's there and don't need to argue the toss about something in a 20,000 page dissertation or something like that. But there you go. Um, do I have a video about the demise of Captain Cook? No, not yet, but who knows? Uh, and I, I love that. I love the story about how could Hawaii have ended up in the British Empire and not as a state of America? That's a cool one, isn't it? Eh? Um, worth 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 doing at some stage. And of course, the Hawaiian flag still has uh, the Union Jack in it. Um, so, you know, there's a very close relationship. Of course, it wasn't that close when Captain Cook got killed there, was it? But there you go. Um, in fact, in fact, I have a feeling either Sir John Bowring or Harry Parks beginning of the Opium War, two of the diplomats I've talked about, one of those two ends up in Hawaii at some stage as well. I think it could have been, could have been John Bowring, could have been the, uh, I like their Hawaiian representative in Europe when Hawaii was still independent. Might be wrong on that. Could have been Parks. It was one of the two of them. Um, absolutely. Okay, fine. Uh, absolutely. This is much more fun, much more fun than having a master's degree. I mean, I know Professor Green would sound quite good or Dr. Green would sound quite good. Uh, Dr. Dean Allen down in South Africa, a friend of mine, uh, you know, he's, lecture he's lecturing with Silver Seas uh, Cruise at the minute. He's a history lecturer. Um, not a bad, not a bad, not bad. You know, not bad as a job, is it really? But, um, but there you go. Uh, not my cup of tea. Might change. Prefer to write a book. Probably going to write a book about the Sudan campaigns, British Sudan campaigns. I think there's a bit of a gap in the market there. Good book by Michael Asher, the Michael Asher yeah, cartoon. But again, I could come with a different style, talk a lot more about some of the, the unknown soldiers, not just the big, big wigs. So there you go. Look, G, thank you very much um, from Inner Forest in New Hampshire. Well, thank you very much. Beautiful part of the world. Uh, did I paint the picture behind me? Uh, G, no, I didn't. But I took the photo. It's actually... Oh, excuse me. It's a, it's a canvas. Um, it was this, uh, I, I took the photo just on my iPhone. I've got it all wrong there, haven't I? That is uh, Watergate Bay in North Cornwall. Glorious, isn't it? I was down there for New Year. That's on New Year's Day. Um, and uh, I got it done, made into a canvas or made canvas. Uh, Max Spielman, when I was over in Solihull recently, they did it in an hour for me, which is, I can't remember how much it was, not, not vast amounts, but yeah, but anyway, so thank you very much, Sergi. It's um, uh, nice to think I could paint. I can't paint a thing. Matchstick men, and even those are rubbish. Right, folk, thank you ever so much for joining me this afternoon. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it's a bit off the cuff. And uh, thank you very much. And G, thank you very much for your generosity as well. Very much, very much appreciated. Um, so, um, and um, I'm sure, actually, I think someone else donated earlier on. So, uh, PL, you did as well. PL, so thank you very much. Um, um, and you voted for a long video. So uh, the, or the danger of throwing it out to everyone, isn't it? There's only, there's only two answers. Long, one long video, two, two shorter videos. We're talking short as in 25 minutes, which by a lot of YouTubers standards is a long video. Um, but I will, um, I, I will have a little think, grab a coffee, grab a cup of tea, something like that. It's tea now, actually, it's the afternoon. Coffee's for the morning. Um, and I have copious amounts of it. Um, and I am going to crack on but uh, I'm really pleased with the script. It's, I hope you really enjoy it. When I get it out, it's, am I going to struggle for tonight? Maybe now. But um, uh, let's see where we go. And don't forget, tomorrow, 1 p.m. UK time, my weekly live as well, OK, where we will have a little dabble through what's happened in British history this week. So make a note of it. Join me then. I'll put up a, uh, I'll put up a, a um, notice in the community uh, a community post and i'll also get a uh, box the time out so the video will be sitting there 
and you can join at one o'clock tomorrow afternoon. OK, so thank you ever so much, everyone. Uh, beer, it's <laughs> Francisco. Thank you very much indeed. Dalton, thank you. Sarah Jane, bet you're none the wiser for the answers, Chris. No, I'm not. But what I do realise is that I'm not going down one path and realising that actually everyone else wants to go down the other. I haven't produced a 49-minuter and everyone said, what the hell are you doing? Nor have I produced a two-parter and everyone says, oh, I was hoping you're going to do a 49. So to a certain extent, Sarah Jane, that works for me, all right? Um, it's nice to have a bit of democracy. It's nice to actually talk to you all. Shame I can't see all your faces. But um, that's the way it is currently with, with YouTube, isn't it? So anyway, folks, thanks ever so much. And I will see you, if I don't see you before, hopefully I'll see you 1 o'clock UK time, 1 p.m. UK time tomorrow. Take care.